Hello, I'm Sam, and in this video, we'll be having a look at the advanced node that comes with um, electrostatics, and this is the capacitance solver. You will need this node to uh, solve, first of all, for the surface charge uh, distribution, uh, because in the free ver in the nodes that come with the free version of electromagnetic nodes, we are assuming that we have a uniform surface charge density, and therefore that limits you to only spherical objects. If you do, and there, and if you do want to use objects with curves and angles, you will need to calculate the surface charge density, and so we will have to use this node. Then afterwards, we can calculate the capacitance as well. So let's start with a blank scene and let's uh, erase everything and let's add in our capacitance solver and see what we get. So we see that we got uh, Suzanne the monkey. And uh, so we, we have two objects that are added to the scene. First of all, our base mesh, and we're using Suzanne and the capacitance solver. Now the capacitance solver will be in the form of the uh, base mesh that you're looking at. So if I had Suzanne, you'll see that this, this is now actually the capacitance solver object which takes which is taken the form of Suzanne. So let's turn on shader editor and you'll notice a couple of things in the shader. We've got uh, dark a dark patch and a sort of lighter patch. Now this this simulation works uh, this uses simulation nodes so we also need to uh, bring in our timeline and we are on frame one. So let's just run this quickly and see what we get. And as you can see now, what's, what has happened is, as time goes by, we're calculating the charge distribution. So for, for an object like Suzanne, and from theory of electrostatics, um, is that charge will generally be more dense in uh, corners and, and areas that are in the, basically in the, in the areas that are further away from sort of the main mesh, uh, uh, area volume so uh, which is going to be the ears and the nose and perhaps the eyebrows so any sharp corners uh, you will have charge that will be uh, will, will have higher charge density compared to the rest of the mesh and this is what's 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 been showing here is that uh, the charge has has moved to to uh, to these areas so if you run this again so this is where, where we have it frame one. This is the first frame calculation. And as we run the, the simulation, we see that the charge has moved there. And also we get uh, the value of capacitance. Now, because we know the charge distribution, we can, uh, and we know that uh, for, uh, we, because we are assuming that we have a conductive object, we know that from theory that the voltage needs to be constant anywhere on the surface. So since now we, we, we have managed to find the surface charge, we can calculate the total charge and then we can divide it by the voltage, uh, assuming one volt, uh, and then we get a value of the capacitance. Okay, so now since we have the surface charge dense uh, distribution calculated, we can actually go back to our uh, nodes to look at the field planes. Now let's for example, let's we use the uh, field plane here, and let's drag and drop, and let's get rid of the icospheres. Let's reset position, and let's make sure we're targeting the capacitance solver, and let's just increase the dimensions of our plane. So, action. Let's bring it up here. Let's perhaps a little bit back here. So now this plane uh, actually in the geometry in this geometry node editor and it's set up it does know that we have calculated the charge distribution so and that's because uh, you can see here uh, I'm using uh, name attribute the the attribute exists uh, uh, output which then goes into this switch node and so now I'm using using the charge uh, density distribution calculations set up assuming a constant and a uniform charge density. So uh, if we now bring up our timeline again and just see how does the, I always struggle with these, let's, let's bring up timeline and let's run the simulation again. So let's, if you see that the, it does, the field gets a bit more refined 
and based on the um, how the charge is now distributed. Now you might also be wondering how accurate is this capacitance value that we get. So I'll be doing the same thing as we did with uh, magnetostatics where I compared my results with fast Henry but here I'll be comparing it with uh, fast cap but before we just do that let's uh, uh, perhaps compare it with uh, a theoretical value so if we want to calculate the capacitance of a sphere we know that from theory the capacitance of a sphere is equal to 4 pi times the primitiv primitivity times the radius. So if the radius of this sphere is one meter, then we should expect a capacitance of about 111 uh, picofarads. So let's test it very quickly. So uh, I've added a sphere and I'm going to select my capacitance solver and I'm going to be targeting the sphere now. Let me just move the plane, the E-field plane here. And I'm at frame one, so let's start the simulation. and you can see because it's, it's a sphere, it, it almost calculates the capacitance within the first few, few frames. So we're at 112 picofarad compared to, to the theoretical value of 111. So let's go back to Suzanne and the capacitance of Suzanne that we got was about 99.6 picofarads. And let's compare that to fast, uh, fast cap. So we've got fast cap here open. And again, fast cap is a software um, uh, developed by MIT in the 1990s. You can download it from fastfeedsolvers.com. I'll also be showing you how to export uh, your Blender meshes into FastCap by using uh, FreeCAD. Um, but um, for now, let's just run this simulation in FastCap and see what we get. And run, and very quickly, we got a value of um, it's in microfarads. We've got a value of 0.1 micro, which is 100 nano uh, farads. Now, in fast cap, unfortunately, there's no way of changing the uh, scale and the uh, units. Um, so, um, at the moment, in in fast cap, Suzanne is actually 1,000 times larger than it is in Blender. So which means that we just have to scale these values. We have to divide the values that we get by a thousand. So this value is a hundred nanofarad. And if we divide that by a thousand, we get a hundred picofarad. And so that is almost very similar to what we got here in, uh, in our capacitance solver in Blender. So now that we've verified Suzanne's capacitance in fast cap, let's try experimenting with other objects. So Let's try to calculate the capacitance of the default cube. And so let's uh, first of all, uh, we can delete Suzanne. And also from the capacitance solver, here's Suzanne. We've got nothing now in our scene. Let's add in the default cube. And let's select that from the capacitance solver. Now you'll notice immediately we've got uh, the capacitance value. And if you run the simulation, we don't see much changing in terms of the surface charge density. Now that is because that our default cube um, only has a few number of faces. And for the capacitance solver to work properly, you need a lot more than that. So we, we will have to subdivide this cube. Before I subdivide it though, I uh, want to bring your attention to the geometry notes set up for the capacitance solver. And you'll notice that I've put a limit on the number of vertices of 1,500. If you have more than that, then uh, the solver will not run. Of course, you can change its value if you want. Uh, the main reason for this limit is that to, um, I've noticed that if you go above a certain value, uh, the simulation becomes extremely slow to run. Um, now this uh, will be, I believe will be improved in Blender version 4.0. Once we have the repeat loop um, available, we should be able to go to much higher number of vertices. But for now, we're only limited to this uh, to this value here. So let's also in our scene go to the object mode, and let's just go to local mode and let's bring in our statistics so we know how many vertices we have. Let's uh, make sure things selected. Right click and subdivide and keep subdividing your cube. 
um, that might be a little bit too much. Let's, let's, let's go with this amount of subdivisions. And perhaps maybe you could add a few more subdivisions, uh, maybe in the areas closer to the edges. So let's add uh, loop cuts, uh, a loop cut here, and maybe a loop cut here, and a loop cut here, and a loop cut here. Okay, so it should be enough. Out of local mode, we could hide the cube and back to frame one. And let's run the simulation again and see what we get. And you see now it's sort of behaving more as you would expect uh, that you have the charge density will be more localized in the edges and the corners, and you have less less charge being fo focused in uh, in the center. Um, of the cube's face. And let's do a similar thing. Let's, com let's compare our results to FastCap. So I've got FastCap here, and this is our same cube. And let's just make sure this is the same, similar, uh, same mesh that we have. And let's run FastCap, see what we get. FastCap is, let's just run it again, make sure. And FastCap is giving us a capacitance of 146 uh, or 147 nanofarads. And again, we have to divide this by 1,000. So it's 147 picofarads compared to what we got in Blender, 148.5 picofarads. So very, very similar results. Let's now create a third example. And let's try now to calculate the capacitance of a cone. Now the cone is a very interesting object because it's got this very uh, pointy tip here. And so we expect most of the charge to be very dense at the tip here, and perhaps maybe also a little bit on the edges here. So, but for now, let's just apply the capacitance silver to the default cone mesh as it is. And you see immediately on uh, first frame, this is what we get if we run the simulation. Uh, this is there is we see that we have so, charges distributed all over here on the top and now and nothing on the bottom uh, and this is the capacitance value now I don't think this is correct and simply because we just don't have enough faces in our cone so if you so if we bring up the wireframe mode we see that we haven't got a sufficient number of faces especially at, uh, here at um, the bottom and also on the sides and so let's add more faces to to it now the, the default cone uh the faces uh, its faces are not uh, quad faces and so you're unable to add loop cuts to it uh, there's many ways you can solve this uh, you could either use the knife tool or if you've got hard ups installed it comes with a very nice tool called um, dice under mesh tools and you could add uh, uh, subdivisions like so you can do that or my preferred way is to simply go to the top vertex and then bevel the vertex uh, control shift b just by a tiny amount such that now you have quad faces uh, and now you're able to add loop cuts as you can see so loop cuts uh, here and let's perhaps add some loop cuts in this area closer to the tip because we know where this is all the charge will be uh, dense and let's go to the bottom phase and let's subdivide this by using inset and again, you would want to have uh, uh, vertices very close to the edge. And then perhaps you could space them out a bit more as you get closer to the, the center, like so. A bit more here, one more here, one here, and one here. Oh, so now let's get out of local mode and let's hide in our cone. And now let's go back to frame one and switch off wireframe and let's do the simulation. And as you can see now, I think this result makes much more sense. Um, you can see that the charge is mainly focused on the top area here, and perhaps maybe just a tiny amount on the edge. And if you go to the shader settings of the capacitance solver, you can also refine uh, this a bit more So by using this color ramp. So you can see now, um, you can refine it. To, to some degree here and now we see that there is actually some charge uh, in the edges now although these colors might give you the impression that there's no charge at all in the size that's not true there's still going to be a, a, a charge on the sides here and in fact if we um, 
look, bring our E field plane viewer and we target the capacitance solver. And let's just make it uh, bigger on the Y. 0.75, that's better, like so. And uh, you can see that, uh, yes, the field is very strong at the tip here and also on the edges and gets weaker as you get closer to the center here. And of course, you can do the same thing if we add more vertices to our eel field plane. Uh, you can see exactly what's happening now. It's uh, pretty much all the field, all the chargers are distributed at the top uh, on the cone here. And if we uh, compare our result to fast cap, this is the same cone that we have. And let's look at the wireframe. This is the wireframe that we have. And when you export it um, to fast cap uh, via FreeCAD, uh, it's an SDL file. And so the mesh gets triangulated, but that's still okay. And let's run fast cap now and see what we get. And let's just run it. Oh, there it is. It's our result is in nanofarads, it's 96.7. Nine. We have to divide this by 1,000, so we have 96.79 picofarads compared to what we got about 97.73 in, in, in Blender. So very close result. Um, I will be uh, sharing the, the fast uh, cap files as well, so and I'll put a link for it in the documentation. Just a quick note about the capacitance uh, solver and the blend file that comes with it. Uh, so I did include uh, the cone uh, example we did and the cube. And one thing to note in general that, in general, that this initial version of uh, the capacitance solver, it only calculates the self capacitance. So if you're trying to, to do, for example, like a parallel plate capacitor, so say we want to create a parallel plate capacitor um, and it's like so, um, you, will, uh, it, it, you will not get a correct result because uh, this solver will assume this is one object, and so the voltage on both of these plates will be equal. Uh, in the next uh, version of uh, Ametromagnet nodes, you will be able to um, do such uh, simulations like parallel plate capacitance.